The Author's Shelf. The Author's Shelf. The Author's Shelf. The Author's Shelf. It's about books and stuff. <laughs> I'm very excited to welcome Mem Fox to Creative Kids Tales. I last chatted with Mem back in January 2012 when Creative Kids Tales was still new. In fact, Mem, you were our second featured author. It's not until today that I've had the privilege of meeting face to face. Thank you for taking the time out of your hectic tour to chat with me. Pleasure. Congratulations on your successful career. As a parent, I would like to thank you for the joy you've brought not only to my children, but children across Australia and around the world with your beautiful stories. Thank you. All right, now I'm going to start with the questions, Mem. Tell us what what five words best sum you up? Um, vivacious, passionate, kind. Perfectionist and um, slightly off the wall. Well, I think all creative people are slightly off the wall, aren't they? <laughs> That's four words. You is that four? Slightly off the wall. <laughs> <laughs> that was the voice of Judy Horacek, who's sitting here with me and Mem today. Uh, thank you for that, Judy. Just Mem, to help. <laughs> Mem give us, can you give us an insight into a day in the life with Mem Fox? What's your typical writing day? My typical writing day is not to write at all. And I'm not joking, George, Georgie. I'm not joking at all. I, most of my days are not spent writing. I write very rarely, very, very rarely. If you added up all my writing in the whole year, it would be amazing if I were writing for six weeks, uh, for even three weeks. Wow. Yeah, okay. I write very, very, very rarely. I am too busy to write. So what are you doing? You're going, you're visiting schools? You No, I don't visit schools at all. I'm far too old to visit schools. I've, I used to do that a lot. I am a fanatical housewife. I'm a very, very busy and highly involved grandmother. Um, but I have never written. Uh, even when, even from the beginning of time, I've never written every day. From the beginning of time. I, 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 I write in tiny, tiny bursts in between putting the soup on and taking it off. I, I just haven't got time. I haven't got the time to spend all day writing. I just haven't got the time. So, so when does your inspiration come? When do you feel like, I actually have to go and write that down? Oh, well, I'm always writing things down, right. you know, because I carry a little notebook. So as soon as I get an idea, I'll write that down in a notebook. And I might forget about it for eight years. Like next year's book that Judy and I are doing together, called Ducks Away, um, I completely forgot about that idea for eight years. Wow. Yeah, okay. eight years. So I am. I think I'm unusual in that I have no discipline about my writing. I do a lot of writing late at night when nobody can ring and there's no disturbance. Yes. Even my husband is not moving around. You know, he's downstairs watching television. So I do a lot of writing very late at night. Yeah. Okay, all right. So I was going to ask you what part of the writing process don't you like, but you don't really follow a process, do you? No, I don't. I don't. So is there anything, from when you have your, your completed manuscript mm. and it's ready to go off, is there any part of the, from writing to when the book is in front of you that you, you really dislike? Um, I think probably the early drafts of a book. Mm -hmm. When you know that what you have written has potential, but what you have actually in front of you on the page is the purest crap you can imagine. You know it has potential. You know you've got a good idea. You know the tune you want to sing, but you just cannot get it down onto the page. You cannot get what's in your head onto the page. I saw you. I saw you interviewed on Channel Seven this morning. Oh yes. And and I I'm not sure if it was that one or another one I watched later in the, later where you said you were pulling. You actually That's pull it. words yeah, out of the air I when you need them. I physically move. I think there must be a word that's a two-syllable word that I need for this three-syllable word. And I'm, I'm, I, I've seen myself sometimes, and I've thought, thank God nobody can see this, because I'm actually reaching. I, I'm, I'm going, you know, trying to grab it out of my head, yes. you know, from the air into my head. Yes. Yeah. Is there a story 
outside the Memfox brand yes. that you would really love to write but haven't written yet? Perhaps, I don't know, a chapter book or a novel? Oh, no, 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 no. You... I know what sells. Uh, this is a profession for me, not a hobby. And I'm not going to write anything that I can't write well because it wouldn't sell and I wouldn't be able to pay my bills. Okay. So, okay? so you're so happy. never. I've written lots of adult non-fiction, right. a lot. Right. Um, I've written for teachers, I've written for parents and so on. Um, and I've enjoyed that. I love that because it's much easier to write that, ex, you know, ex, is it called excursive? What's the word, Judy? What am I looking for? When you can just write without thinking. Um, Genius. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that. I don't know, when you can just write extended writing. I understand. Instead of understand. writing this minute, tiny little jewel of a book. You know, I've just received my the third edition which of a book that I published in 1992, which I co-wrote with a colleague of mine when I was at university. It's called English Essentials. Right. And the third edition has come out. Right. And I started to look at it the other day, and this is really shaming. This is really shaming. My husband said to me, the light was still on, okay? And he said, what are you doing? What are you actually doing? And I said, I'm reading English Essentials. It's a book about grammar. It's a book yes. about writing yes. well. I said, I'm reading English Essentials, and I can't put it down. <laughs> I can't. I just thought this is fantastic. I love this book so much. I really love it that I really write it all those years ago. I was beside myself and I kept saying, no, you mustn't read another chapter. This is silly. Just don't read another chapter. This is self-indulgent nonsense. And you wouldn't help yourself. I wouldn't help myself. I'm going to come across as the most dreadful person having told you that. But I mean, I just, it's the truth. It's the absolute truth. So that writing is... Very enjoyable because there's so few restrictions. But there are a million restrictions in writing a picture book text. Yes. A million. Yes. Uh, you know, brevity, rhythm, yes. word choice, political correctness. Oh my God, yes. it just goes on and on and on. Yes. I understand completely. What's the funniest thing a child has ever said to you during a read aloud session? I was um, in America and I was talking to about 1,200 kids who were sitting on a flat gym floor, okay? They went back for miles. And really, this is no good for your blog because it's a visual thing. But I turned the page in Koala Lu, where Koala Lu doesn't win. And he put his two, the, the, the base of his hands, what's this called? The, the palm. No, the heel. Heel. The heel. Yeah, heel. The heel of his hands on either side of his eyes and pulled his eyes right back towards his ears, okay, because it was a disaster that Kuala Lu didn't win. And he just pulled his face back like that until his eyes were slit. And he said, oh, jeez. <laughs> like that, it was so cute. But I have had a question of a child that looked as if literally it was going to wee if, it, if I didn't ask him what the question was. This right. was also at a school years ago. And he was popping with this question. The place was packed. There were three schools gathered in one place. The teachers were all around the edge of the room. This kid was desperate. And I said, Angel Face, what is your question? And he said, where did you get your earrings? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Pretty fantastic. Yeah. Very cute. They're hilarious. The little kids are so funny. They are so funny. How about that Theo and saying that, giving away this and that? Oh, yes, and copy. you know, I was walking out with this and that the other day, and my grandson said, Where are you taking that book? I said, I'm giving it to Helena, an adult friend of mine, and he knows. He said, Are you giving it away? Like he thought it was the only one in the, in the house. Yes. You can't give that away. And I said, Well, I've got 10 more upstairs. I think I said 20. I said, I've got 20 more upstairs. He said, oh, can I have them all? <laughs> what was so he going to do with them all? He's just crazy about the book. I'm just well, ecstatic because he's a fabulous reader. He can read anything at the age of five. He's five now. Okay. He's five. And, and yet, in spite of that 
<laughs> advancement in this is the only advancement he's got by the way uh, but he can read and I thought that he would find that book beneath him because it's such a little kid's book right. and he's crazy about but it he's, not, he's yeah. embraced it that's yeah. excellent he loves it that's good and the other thing that he said to me once was oh this is brilliant Judy helped me this story about um, he was I went to his school oh yeah it was the end of term I went to his school to pick him up on the last day, and my daughter's a teacher, yes. and I have to pick him up uh, every so often. And I picked him up at the end of school, and they were all dancing and having a lovely time. He's in reception, and I said to him as we were walking to the car, sweetheart, you know, I wish I could be at your school. I wish I could go to your school. And he said, why? And I said, because you have so much fun. And he said, no, it's not like writing books, you know. It's work, work, work. <laughs> You've obviously painted the picture that it's fun to but write a children's fun. book. I've never painted any picture. I swear to God, that killed me. I nearly died. I thought that was so funny. I'll never forget that. Oh, I have to say, it's not fun. It is not. <laughs> the end is fun, but it's not. not it's, it's tear your hair out. So, all right. Do, do you have a book that stayed with you since childhood? One that you're really fond of that you remember from your childhood? Um... Not one that I'd go back to. Okay. No. There were books I loved as a child, you know, Snuggle Pop and Cuddle Fire, Blinky Bill, a whole series of na nature, sort of nature books by a man called Leslie Reese, mm -hmm. who, who lived to be in his 90s. I tracked him down because he influenced me so much. Right. Um, he lived in um, one of these little bays around here somewhere. Okay. Uh, and he wrote a book called Shy the Platypus, read The Big Kangaroo, but they were very long picture books. They're yes. more like like chapter books and picture book form. You know, picture books as they exist now just did, didn't exist then. No. I, I'm old, you know, I'm talking late 40s now, early 50s when I was a child. I don't remember. I, adore, I remember adoring books that I remember being read to, but I don't. Yeah, okay. No. All right. What makes a good picture book? Look, there, you can't say a picture book because there are two kinds, okay? okay. So there's the kind for very little kids. Yes. Okay. That is full of rhyme or rhythm or repetition or all three. So there's that kind of book. Yes. Okay. Then there's the book with a beginning, middle and end, which is a totally different kind of book. Now, the beginning, middle and end book, I think, they all have to be brief. Yes. Okay. My longest book is 651 words, and I think if I wrote it now, I could probably shorten it. That was Wilfred Gordon and Donald Hartridge. I was talking to Judy today about Rosie's Walk, which is one of my favorite books of all time by Pat Hutchins. That book is a classic still in print. It's 32 words. So brevity is important. Um, rhyme, rhythm, and repetition in the books for older kids. I think you... If you haven't somehow felt the emotion of the story yourself, if it's only come from your head and not your heart, if you have imagined the entire thing, it's not going to work. It has to come from something of the compost of your own life. Something has to be real to you, even though you're not going to write that story about yourself. You're never going to write that. But it's the emotion, it's that thing that... And that thing causes what I call a blue page. And there's no good book unless you have a blue page. Even, you know, this is the, the longer book, the longer picture book. Yes. It has to have a blue page. In Possum Magic, it's literally blue, which is why I call it the blue page. But it's when everything falls apart. Yes. And it's got to fall apart in the way that the little kid says, oh, geez. Yes. Okay? So in Possum Magic, it's when the little possum doesn't get visible again in spite of everything that the grandmother's tried to do. Grandma Poss looked miserable. Don't worry, Grandma said, hush, I don't mind. But in her heart of hearts, she did. Crash, everything crashes. Yes. Koala Lou doesn't win, everything crashes. Wombat Divine doesn't get the part, everything crashes. Now, in Wombat Divine, the very, you know, the, the blue page comes really right at the end of the book. Yes. But there has to be a blue page. Yes. But I think the most important thing is that in every single book, whether it's long or short, the rhythm is the... I think that people think that it is possible to have an idea and to write it down and to do two or three drafts and to think that that is a publishable manuscript, because it's not. Right. I'm doing a three-hour workshop on this on Sunday morning, so it's very fresh in my mind because I've just prepared it. But in Wombat Divine, for example, there's a, 
There's a phrase that goes, so, so, with his heart full of hope and his head full of dreams, his heart full of hope and his head, so we've got three H's, mm -hmm. full of dreams. Now, why isn't it his heart full of dreams? No, sorry, why haven't I got it the other way around? Right. And it's because you've got head, his heart full of hope and his head D, 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 finishes with D, yes. his head full of dreams. The next word starts almost, the next yes, word starts yes. with a D. Yes. Now, it's that kind of finicky, perfectionist, maddening, enraging, uh, furious, where you just can't stand writing. You just cannot stand it until you get that right. And you can't, you know, it, you can't do it unless, unless that's, that kind of stuff is there. Assonance is another thing. I've just Judy, Judy and I have just had an enraging email from a publisher in the States who wanted to change the word adore to love. Okay? That takes out a syllable, so the rhythm is stuffed. Yes. Okay? Because adore's got two syllables. And it says, I'll tell you a story of how I adore... Oops, I'm shouting. I'll tell you a story of how I adore you. Now, those story and adore don't rhyme, but there's assonance. Yes. The middle of it is the same sound. Okay, so it's an internal rhyme. And for an editor, we don't think it can be an editor because nobody would be this stupid. And for an editor to take out love instead of a you know, instead of a door, yes. to, to take out one syllable and to take out the internal rhyme is so beyond belief that it must have been you know, somebody who was actually packing books in the warehouse who had that idea. Who's the reasoning that American children don't know the word at all? So that Which is ridiculous. Mm. Because what Australian kid knows the word at all? Mm. Exactly. We're there to introduce kids to language. Yes. That's our role. Yes. And, and kids can see straight through it. If you don't continue that rhyme and oh. it doesn't flow. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So the question was about what makes a perfect picture with mm. Have you left something out? I was talking about the word side of it. I know you. Of course, 50% of a picture book is the illustrators. And you have to, that's the other thing the writer has to do. You have to remember that 50% of the book is the illustrators. You don't have to say everything. No, exactly. The less you say, the more license there is for the illustrator to do his or her magic. Yes. Okay. So, so you, you don't say they lived on a hill behind a church. You know, the illustrator will, will say that. You just don't, don't put in the descriptions because that's what the illustrator will do. The illustrator will often, and this is the case in, I think, at least three of my books and certainly in this latest one, the illustrator puts their own story in also. Yes. There's nothing to do with me. No. You know, Judy has two little mice running through this new book of ours, yes. this and that. And there's a whole story of their adventure in that book, which is nothing, it wasn't my suggestion, it's not my... I can't see that. I can't see. I don't see the picture. I was going to ask, do you give notes no, to your illustrations? In the world. No? I would never give a no? single note. I think it's an outrage. Yeah, it is an smart. absolute outrage to give a note to an illustrator. Right. It is the worst insult that you could... Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Honestly, even when illustrators... Say, because Judy is an illustrator and a writer as yes. well. Say she wrote a text, okay, and somebody else was illustrating, which is highly unlikely in her situation. But just say somebody else was writing, was illustrating Judy's text. Yes. But she's already an artist. Imagine how enraged she would feel, even if the artist was a genius. If the artist said, oh, uh, no, it, no, this artist would be furious. If Judy said, I want you to do this, and I want you to do that, and I want you to do the other. The artist who was chosen, the illustrator chosen, would say, well, stuff you, do it yourself then. Mm, you okay. know? That's the reason I don't, because as soon as I give a suggestion, the illustrator could easily say, since, since when have you been able to draw? Since when have you done a course in children's literature? Since when have you been to university and studied design? Since when did you go and do a course on, you know, medieval art? 
<laughs> I mean, it, it would be, oh, it's horrendous. But it's what a lot of people think, that they think that you can't draw. Yeah. They know you can't draw, yeah. but they think that you can visualise all the rest of it, oh. and you just go, well, put that sheep up in that corner. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, do that there, yeah. or, yeah. in fact, with the design of the whole, it's the same, that you have to find the rhythms of the mm. pictures and mm. fit them with the rhythms of the text. And, um, so, so do you chat about the book beforehand, or do you just no, you you no, give the story? And, I don't do any and chat at all. Okay. I just send. We share an agent, which is very useful. We right. share a literary agent. We, have, I mean, we don't share. We both have the, yes. the same literary agent, and so I send it to Jenny. I send my text to Jenny, and Jenny sends it to Judy. Right. So you get the the, the manuscript, and it's your interpretation, and and you just go with it with the illustrations. I don't take on every text, um, so it has to be something that I feel that I can see a story in, that I feel that I can bring something to, so not just a literal adaptation of the words. Judy um, has rejected me. <gasps> I know. Can you repeat that, please, ma'am? Judy Horacek <laughs> has rejected me. Look at my face. <laughs> I should have done a visual, shouldn't I? I know you're going to be very passionate about this one. Why is it important to read to children from an early age? Because if you are a responsible parent, do you want your child to fail at school? Is that what you want? Is that what you actually are desperate for your child to fail at school? Are you so desperate to, you know, ignore the fact that reading is a joy that you can actually look forward in that child's life and say, now, if they find reading difficult and if they take a long time to learn to read, how miserable are they going to be at school? How unable to cope in life are they going to be. It is, it's so irresponsible. It's so irresponsible. But that sounds, not to read the kids, but that sounds so mean and so negative. So let's completely switch here to a completely positive way of looking at this. It is so damn hilarious to read to children. It is so warm. It's so funny it's so loving and you just want to bite the back of their neck they're so cute you know you just want to see you just it's so beautiful I, I mean just a couple of weeks ago I was reading this and that to Theo my grandson and we got to the three speckled hens is it two or three speckled hens two two we got to the two speckled hens who were terribly terribly fat and Theo said boy they must have been eating junk food you know and it's just that that comment yes. you know that where you just think, where did that kind It's hysterical, absolutely hysterical. So reading to kids is, I can't believe people don't want the joy know, of it. They're delight. Can I tell you a slide sheet one? Yeah. Friend of mine was reading to a little boy and the slide sheet who's on skis going down the slide and wears the dream sheet and he just went, so dangerous, mummy. <laughs> I, I That's why it's such good fun. I know, no, I don't. I I'm don't know why. Sorry, Georgia. I, go, I get so passionate about it. That I, Absolutely. I, I sound like you know a mean and nasty person. I have because to say, I, I thought you were going to so, so you were gonna lean over and hit me for asking you that no, question. I just get so distressed. I know. You know, I have close members of my family who have not been able to read, and I cannot tell you where they've ended, ended up. I, I actually yeah. cannot tell you where they've ended up. I you, can't, you I can't would, imagine you not reading to you, you wouldn't believe where they've ended up. These, 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 and these are quite, you know, they're not closely related to me, but they're pretty close. Mm. And the fact that they couldn't read, it has... It has oh, it's you also changed want to say their life completely. It only completely. takes 10 minutes a night, yeah. which is your other yeah. It doesn't take very long. No. Does. It's ten minutes a night. It's three books a day. Yeah. It's the same three books a night for three months. Yeah. It's the same book a night for three yeah. months. Yes. It drives you crazy. But the kid loves it. Absolutely. And it's that bonding experience mm. that's important mm. as well as, as mm. helping them for their future. Yeah. All right. Do you think the digital age has damaged or assisted the children's book industry? I think it's assisted it. Okay. Um, children are faced with much more... Um, they're, they're, they're faced with quite a lot of words in, in the digital world, yes. actually. People think that it's all pictures and games, but there's, you know, I think on a particular thing that uh, my grandson has, it says continue, press, and menu. Yes. Okay, so that he could know what to do next. Yes. Now, at the age of two, he couldn't read at all. He couldn't read. Right. But he could read continue, press, and menu. 
Uh-huh. Now, that was from an iPad. It wasn't from a book. Yes. Okay. So, I don't think everybody... Every time anything new happens, like television, like the radio, I'm sure when the radio first came in, uh, everybody says, oh, the book is going to die, the book is dead, oh, you know, this new thing is terrible, the sky is going to fall in, you know, the whole world has changed. We're much smarter than that, the human race. We can accommodate these things. I love technology. I don't know what I would do without technology. I like wasting my time on technology. I like sitting at night thinking I'm writing and instead Googling real estate, you know. <laughs> um, I adore it. I love it as a time-wasting thing and also for information. I use it all the time. But I'm still an avid reader. I have a real book. I have a physical book with me and I would die if I didn't have it mm. on the plane. I, I would just go berserk if I didn't have a real book. Yes. L- last time I travelled, I, I didn't take a book with me oh. and I just had my iPad and I got to the airport and I had withdrawals. I had to go and buy a book at the airport. Oh. I couldn't get on the plane without it. Right. Yeah, and I was trying to find it because I knew you were reading it. And like, I just spent that hour looking for it. Thank you. For Sarah's reading, I don't remember. So you see, and all three of us, you know, Sarah up at the first, Judy, illustrator, writer, cartoonist, extraordinaire, then folks, we are all accommodating both the digital world and the book world. And I think, and like, there, there are moods that my grandson is in where he, he wants, really wants a book because it's more soothing. Yes. It's more calming. Yes. It's more bonding. It's been close, physically close and interaction and so on. It's a beautiful thing. The iPad is something totally different. He has to be in a totally different mood for that. Okay. Kids are not going to like books, Georgie. They're not going to like books. If books are not introduced to them. That's right. You know, it's the magic of books. And the earlier they get the book, the earlier they get books in their life, the more normal books are. So if the child has had a book from the second day of its birth, you know, after birth. Yes. If they have books all the time, then books are not going to seem special. Books are not going to seem difficult. Books are not going to seem boring as opposed to technology. They're going to be the most magical things in the world. Yes. Full of treasures. They are. Mm. They are. All right, I have two little questions left. Is that all right? All right. Make sure you have your own. Yes, I am, I am. (laughs) The questions are all little. The answers aren't necessarily Oh. (laughs) No, they go on forever. All right. (laughs) What excites you about the future of children's books? It's It's just more of the same. Okay. It's it's absolutely more of the same because that's what children... That's a publisher's question. Yeah. And children Do you want me to ask you, Sarah? No, 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 no. <laughs> children are asking <laughs> for the same thing. Uh, children don't change. No. Children have hopes. Children have terrors. Mm. Children have uh, senses of humour. Children across the world never change. It doesn't matter what's happening around them. They love their mothers on the whole and dread being parted from them. Mm. They, they're scared of moving to school. They hate moving house. Um, you know, they, they, they fear sharks or ghosts or every child around the world has a similar psyche, you know, and that never changes. So we are, Judy, people like Judy and I are writing books for that universal child who will never change and never stop needing the beautiful books that are available. Thank you. I'll put that bit in. Yes. Thank you very much. That's lovely. <laughs> All right. <laughs> My last question is, what advice would you give to someone trying to break into the children's book market? You need a sense of rhythm. Learn. This is not a joke, okay? If you think that you are, you don't quite know how language works, I to recommend learning Green Eggs and Ham by heart. By heart. Okay. Okay. Uh, learn a Shakespeare piece by heart, a Shakespeare speech by heart. You know, learn ten verses of the King James Version of the Bible by heart. You have to know where, it's not just syllable count. You can't just say, I need three syllables. Yes. Because it's about a beat. 
it's not just about a stress. I, I, I don't know what I'm talking about, but it's something innate. Yes. You know, that's why I'm talking rubbish to you, because it's innate. Yes. It comes from feeling it. Yes. Um, I cannot express it objectively. I, and even though I was an academic, I wasn't an academic in this area. So I can't express, I can't express what it is, why rhythm is so important. I just know that it is. So my feeling is, one of my maxims is cut. Keep cutting. You think you've finished? You think you cannot cut another word? Keep cutting. Put your hand over the first paragraph. Can you start with the second? Put your hand over the second paragraph. Can you start with